Hi everyone, welcome back to Library Time with Mrs. Poole. All right, it is the last story for the older picture book category. I hope you enjoyed the other two stories. They were remarkable, both amazing stories about horses. The third book we are going to share together is called Six Dots. This is a biography. It is a story of young Louis Braille and it is written by Jen Bryant and illustrations are by Boris Kulikov. And before we start the story, so cool, it actually shows the Braille letters on the inside pages and shows, or this one shows you, it's a series of six dots and it shows you how the dots are put together to form the letter. And this side actually shows you what it would actually look like if you were feeling it. So it doesn't have all the circles, it just has a, a series of dots or a dot to represent each letter. And it says, we the blind are as indebted to Louis Braille as mankind is to Gutenberg, Helen Keller. It says on the inside jacket cover, Louis Braille was just five years old when he lost his sight. He was a clever boy, determined to live like everyone else. And what he wanted most of all was to be able to read. Even at the School for the Blind in Paris, there were no books for him. And so he invented his own alphabet, a whole new system for writing that he could read by touch. A system so ingenious that it is still used by the blind community today. Jen Bryant and Boris Kulikov share the inspiring story of this amazing young inventor who gave the gift of reading to blind people everywhere. So here we go, the story of Six Dots, a story of young Louis Braille. And it even gives you a pronunciation guide here because some of the, where did it say he grew up? He grew up in Paris. So some of the words are in French. So it gives a pronunciation guide as well as to how to pronounce the words. Here we go. On the day I was born, Papa announced me to the village. Here is my son, Louis. The neighbors came clucking their tongues, whispering, too small, he won't survive. Oh, but I did survive. I was a curious child and my eyes studied everything. Maman's gentle face, lace draping my cradle, the smooth shape of a bread loaf on the table. I grew strong and healthy when I rode to the bakers on my brother's broad shoulders or fed the chickens with my sisters. The villagers waved and smiled. So handsome, they cried. And clever too, my sisters said. At three, I knew everyone in Couvray by name. I counted the eggs in my sister's basket and the sparrows in the trees. I repeated stories I heard word for word. But what I loved most was to watch Papa work. People came from far away to have a harness made or a broken bridle mended. In Papa's hands, the rough leather strips became smooth and useful. I wanted to be just like him. But when I reached for a tool, ne touche pas, don't touch that, Papa warned. Then more gently, you're too small yet, Louis. Wait till you're older. Too small, those words. I wanted to be bigger, stronger, older. Perhaps if I showed Papa what I could do. The leather was smooth, the awl was sharp. I knew just how to. Papa, Papa, Papa! My 
my life changed that day. A healer bandaged my eyes. Again, I heard, Ni touche pas, don't touch. But the bandage itched so much. My hands, like the sparrows in the trees, were small and quick. I couldn't keep them away. I didn't mean to make things worse, but I did. The infection spread to my other eye until I could see nothing at all. No trees or sparrows, no faces, no lace or loaves of bread. By the time I turned five, I was completely blind. The villagers whispered, Poor Louis Braille, such a clever boy. What will happen to him now? My world was dark and dangerous. I stumbled about the house, banging into the chairs, the walls, the door. My body ached. Where is the sun? I cried. But the sun did not come. I sat by the window, training my ears to do what my eyes could not. Clang, bang, kish, kish. That was Papa in his shop. Swoosh, swish, swoosh, swish. Long skirted ladies hurrying to market. Comp, 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 stop. Soldiers marching down the street. Grr, grr, roof, roof, grr. The neighbor's angry dog chained too tight. Alone in the dark, I knew just how he felt. My family did what they could. Papa made me a wooden cane. Each day I walked a little farther. Tap, 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 tap counting the steps between the house and the garden, the vineyard and the chicken coop, the bakers and the millers, and back to Papa's shop. My brother taught me to whistle. <whistles> and when the sound echoed back, it warned me of things in my path. My sisters made a straw alphabet. Papa made me letters with leather straps or by pounding round top nails into boards. With Maman, I played dominoes, counting the dots with my fingertips. The village priest taught me to recognize trees by their touch, flowers by their scent, and birds by their song. I listened closely as he read to me from the Bible and from books of poetry. Do you have books for blind children? I asked. No, Louis, the priest replied. I am sorry. When I was older, I went to school with the other village children. All day, as they wrote down words and numbers or read out loud from printed pages, I sat in the front row, listening and memorizing. Do you have books for blind children? I asked again. No, Louis, the teacher replied. I'm sorry. But I didn't want people to feel sorry for me. I just wanted to read and to write on my own, like everyone else. The Marquise, a noble lady living nearby, heard about me. She wrote a letter to the Royal School for the Blind, asking if I could study there. Finally, a reply came. Bienvenue! Welcome, Louis! The priest says they have books for the blind, I told Papa excitedly. But you're only ten, Maman cried, and you'll live there most of the year, my brother added. Paris is a big, fat city, 
far away, my sisters warned. How could I make them understand? Without books, I would always be poor Louis Braille. I would always be held back like that dog chained too tight. I love you, I told them, but I must go. I didn't need my eyes to know that the royal school in Paris was not a palace. My hard bed was in a damp, crowded room. My uniform itched. My meals were small and cold. The teachers were strict. The older boys teased and stole. How I missed my home. And yet I stayed. I stayed because somewhere in this old moldy building, there were books for the blind. Only the best students are allowed to read them, my friend Gabrielle told me. Then I will be one of the best, I replied. Learning at the blind school was almost like learning in Couvray. We sat and listened. We memorized and recited. We also had music lessons and made slippers in the workshop. As my fingers flew across the organ keys or between the strips of cloth, I dreamed of reading and writing. I worked and studied as hard as I could. Finally, it was that day a guide led me to the library. I say I vous ici, sit here, he commanded. There was shuffling, grunting, and scraping, a thud. Voila, there it is, he said. Just trace the raised letters with your fingers. It was a long reach to the top of page one. My fingers traced the outline of each letter just as I'd done in Couvray with straw and leather. But these waxy letters were huge. After reading the first sentence this way, my hand was halfway down the page. A few sentences more and I had to turn the page. A few more sentences, two more pages, and then the end. Say two, is that all I asked? There are more, the guide replied, but they're just like this one. Words as large as my hand, sentences that took up half a page. I sighed, even if I read a hundred books like this, how much could I learn? I skipped supper. I lay in bed, wishing I was home. When I finally fell asleep, I dreamed that the neighbor's angry dog broke free. He ran to me, licking my face until I laughed and laughed. Louis, Louis, lève toi, get up. Gabriel shook me awake. It was morning. The headmaster wants us, let's go. Allons. Everyone had gathered in the big room. Dr. Pinier spoke. A French army captain has invented a code to send secret messages during battle. The code is read by touch, not by sight. So we might use it here too. You're each holding a message written with patterns of dots, the headmaster continued. Each pattern stands for a sound, such as ow or in or ch. We listened as he explained. It wasn't easy. There was a lot to remember. Flipping my paper over, I moved my fingers from left to right, feeling the dots. Fall back, I shouted. Everyone laughed. It was a battle order, of course, but now my heart pounded with hope. I asked 
for another. Again, I touch the dots. Supplies arrive at dawn. We, yes, the headmaster cried. The others shouted out their messages too. How are the messages written, I asked. The headmaster handed me a slate, a wooden frame with a metal piece in the middle. Slide your paper underneath, he explained. Now take this stylus, but be careful. The sharp tool was like the awl in Papa's shop. I shivered. Use it to punch the code into the paper, he said. I made a few of the complicated dot patterns, then flipped the paper to read them by touch. For many weeks, I practiced reading by touch. Using dots was a brilliant idea, at least on the battlefield. But for us, the code was so hard that everyone else in the school had given up. Even a short message takes so many dots, and I can't fit a single symbol under my finger, I complained to Gabriel. Plus, the captain's code stands for sounds, not for letters. So what, my friend replied. So why shouldn't we spell words and write sentences like sighted people do, I argued. This code was a start, but it wasn't nearly good enough. We, the blind, were still held back. Would the captain work on improving it with me? I asked the headmaster. I am sorry, Louis. He isn't interested, he replied. Sorry, that word... Long ago, I had watched Papa take rough leather strips and make them useful. Now I knew what I had to do. Late at night, while the others slept, I bent over my slate and punched the pages. I tried hundreds of ways to simplify the captain's code. I worked until my back was stiff and my fingers ached. Often, I fell asleep a few minutes before morning. A year passed then another and another. That winter, I turned 15. I was often sick, but I wouldn't rest. Finally, it was ready to test. I asked the headmaster to choose something from his own library, a book I'd never heard before. Please read it out loud, I said. Dr. Pinier began. After a few minutes, I interrupted. You can go much faster, sir. As he read, I copied down the words, spelling each one correctly. My new code used just six dots, arranged in two columns like dominoes. Each dot pattern stood for a letter of the alphabet. Fini, said Dr. Pinier when he reached the end of chapter one. Finished! I turned my pages over. Reading by touch, I recited the entire chapter. Louis, to the fay, you did it, he shouted. Word spread quickly. The other students rushed to try it. Si facile, so easy. Ese vite, and so fast. We can read words and write letters like everyone else. As my friends traded messages, I remembered watching Papa in his shop, bent over rough strips of leather, making them useful. I had become like him after all. At the end, there is an author's note page. I'm just going to read you just a little bit of it. It says, if you ask me to make a list of great inventors, who would be on that list? Gutenberg, Da Vinci, Edison. Then there would be Bell, Franklin, Marconi, Tesla, Carver, Whitney, Hopper, just a sampling of more names you might consider. 
based on the number, kind, and overall impact of their creations. But do you know that nearly every day, whenever you're in a school, restaurant, hotel, elevator, bank, or other public space, the invention of a teenager is there too? The name Braille deserves to be on everyone's list of great inventors. Just like these others, he recognized a rough idea, a fingertip code used on battlefields, and worked exhaustively to shape it into something that changed the world forever. Unlike those other inventors, however, Braille was a child inventor who worked alone and without public support or financial backing. Living in a converted prison building and already suffering the early signs of lung disease, Louis Braille managed to create a system of reading and writing for the blind that is still used today. In the past several centuries, no one so young has developed something that has had such a lasting and profound impact on so many people. This is my second book about Louis Braille. In 1994, my young adult biography of Braille was published as part of the series, Great Achievers, Lives of the Physically Challenged. The book was designed to inform, and it did so well enough, I think. But more recently, as I encountered examples of the Braille alphabet in public libraries and on college campuses, in airports and on ATMs, I asked myself, what did it feel like to be Louis Braille? Nothing I'd read about from the young Frenchman, including my own account, had led me to experience Braille's emotions. What was it like to be Louis Braille? This story is my attempt to answer these questions. That is an amazing story. Six Dots, a story of young Louis Braille. Book three of the older picture book category of the California Young Reader Medal Contest. So this is the last book. So lock in your head what your favorite book was. It is a tough competition because all three books were amazing. So which one would you pick as your favorite? I will have a video following this one that will do a quick review of all the stories and then you can make your final decision and you will be voting soon with your teacher in your classrooms. Until next time, happy reading.